So, so this is a vegetative norm, it's a really controllable. <coughs> so it's not about the technology. The technology is absolutely a tool to bring about that change. And as I said, it's not even about completing learning. It's about making changes in the workplace um, to really going to get results for you as an organisation. So this is another slide that Maureen likes. Right? I love this. I love this. <laughs> um, and I mean, this was like designed in like 1899. Which is unbelievable because it almost looks like kind of Google glasses that they have on their, on their head. Um, but, but this is the whole idea that you know, technology is used for knowledge transfer. It's used as a way to help knowledge transfer from the teacher or from the kind of subject matter expert into somebody's head. But as I said, that's not just what it's about. It's not just knowledge transfer, it's also the whole thing about motivation and really kind of changing behaviour and really kind of sparking and giving people a catalyst where they really want to learn. Um, but yeah, it's unbelievable, isn't it? So, I mean, that was a trend. Do you ever did you find that? Like, kind of the idea of future trend. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to kind of go through a number of these trends. I suppose when I say trends, we're not talking about trends like as in fashion or you know what's in vogue, it's, it's blue and it's black or whatever. It's more that there are a lot of shifts and kind of happening at the moment in terms of things, things like broadband. The fact that we now have fantastic high speed broadband across Ireland. That means that you can do video streaming. So trends are kind of the, the you know trends come from kind of technology technological advances, and um, there's also user learner expectation. If people are used to kind of doing things on Facebook where they're taking videos of themselves, you know, doing the water bucket challenge or whatever, <laughs> I haven't done that. It's not bad. So that creates an expectation where people are more comfortable to tell stories, to get to make videos of themselves and share them. So a lot of things that are there, there are trends out there. Some of it's technological and um, things that are changing. Some things it's about the learner themselves. They expe expect things to be engaging. They expect things to be fun. Um, so it comes from a lot of different kind of drivers in terms of where these trends, these learning trends are coming from. Um, one trend, which is something that we, we kind of, the whole time we're having these kinds of conversations um, with our clients. So it's back to the point that a guy did earlier um, about, you know, is it classroom or is it online or What's the kind of, the, how do they work together? Is it one or the other, or how do they play out? Um, something that we're really keen on is this idea of blended learning. So it's not online, it's not face-to-face. -face. It's really thinking through what's the blended model that plays to the strength of both. Um, so one thing is, for example, face-to-face. -face. People want to network, they want to bond. Maybe they want to go to the golf, play golf or whatever. Maybe they want to go to the pub afterwards. So there is that place within an organisation face-to-face -face training. It's a great place to kind of share experiences, to say, oh gosh, I'm really stuck in something, you know, to role play. So face-to-face -face absolutely has a place in terms of the whole tra training matrix. Um, but in terms of blend, in terms of the online environment, it can be fantastic for that kind of underpinning theoretical, theoretical knowledge. And so quite often, uh, we're working with a new, a new client actually in Scotland, I was over there on Friday for the historic day after. I thought there was going to be a party, but it <laughs> wasn't. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so we're working with Skills Development Scotland, and they're looking at how do we make our workforce, like we've got a workforce of careers advisors, how do they become more digital proficient? Like, they're kind of like an older kind of age, age group, and they're working with teenagers, and they're like, how can we get them, how can we upskill them? So what we're working with them is a solution where it'll be kind of classroom-based, in terms of the initial you know, digital efficiency, but then we can be setting a number of work-based tasks, so it won't be all happening in the classroom. They'll go online, they'll complete certain work-based tasks and share those online. So it's also about extending the whole learning beyond, you know, what happens in a day or what happens in an hour, to something that happens that's really kind of a roadmap, a learning roadmap. <clears throat> now, let me see where we're going to go next. So, um, so that's the whole blended, kind of the whole flip classroom, that's another term for it. Another one for our glossary. <laughs> That's the whole idea of a kind of a flipped classroom. Um, as I said, digital storytelling is a, is a massive trend. Um, in our aim, we've actually developed uh, and, uh, is it free? It's free in our pilot phase. <laughs> it's free still free. It's still free. <laughs> so we've developed a digital storytelling authoring tool, and it's very much to get um, to get. You, you can kind of log on, create your own story, and integrate um, videos, audio, and text and kind of imagery. To tell a story, um, and you might be saying, "Oh, well, how does that relate? How can I tie that into what I'm planning?" But we've, it can be used very creatively. We did a project; it was a health health-based project for community nurses, and as part of that, they wanted um, to kind of bring alive the kind of the, the kind of individuals that people are dealing with and the kind of the issues they have. So 
we kind of created a character. We used, she told her story. She was somebody who was living in the mountains. Oh, the mountains. <laughs> she was living in a rural area. You know, she maybe met her neighbours were really important to her. She saw her brother once a month. You know, she forgot to take her medication or medicines. So it was creating a scenario based on this character who told her story from a first perspective. And it was actually a creative character. But the whole idea of storytelling, it's really engaging. It's really emotive. Um, and it really kind of taps into what we'd almost call like tacit learning. So it's not kind of, it's not about the kind of the knowledge or ticking the boxes. Sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And sometimes when you hear a story, it kind of, it works on things other than your brain. It's kind of the whole heartstrings as well, which, which leads into the whole motivation, I suppose, as well. Um, I'll, show you, I'll show you some examples. Um, in terms of kind of social and informal learning, um, I suppose to me, we were talking about this yesterday morning, because <laughs> I'm a real fan of um, social, social based learning and peer sharing, but it is tricky. Like, it's really hard to get it, to, to embed that culture in an organisation. If you're not used to kind of you know sharing comments online or kind of having live chats, but people, but I actually kind of think people are doing this. Like people, we're always skyping colleagues. We're always saying, "Oh, how do you do this?" or "Where's the file for that?" or so there is information sharing happening more and more for <coughs> years, and it's also to do with even it's like the water water cooler movement, sort of mode movement. It could be movement. the water there's a water theme coming in here, but anyway. In terms of, like, you know, you talk to people, you know, when you're making a coffee, that's often the, the most insightful thing of the day. When you're chatting to somebody and you're saying, oh, what are you working on? Or have you found, you know, have, have you, have you, how are you going to deal with this issue or this problem? So it's like, how do we as educators create that experience online? And, and as I said, there is a real opportunity there. But it is, it, it does take a lot of effort because you have to really create that culture where people are comfortable, um, you know, sharing tools, sharing tips. And, and it's, but it's that whole informal learning, I think, is something that really um, is really important. And it's like we were chatting earlier about ambassadors, like even if you're creating people within an organisation to become ambassadors for whatever that learning is that you're wanting to kind of embed. Um, and so they become almost like agents of change and within, within the organisation. Um, so in terms of learning campaigns and pathways, um, I'll just kind of look at that in a little bit more detail. Um, I suppose... When we were, myself and Sharon were chatting at Venue Cal at one stage, we were kind of thinking, you know, is, it's not, when we were developing a course, it was aimed at the whole food industry and chefs and people working in coffee shops and, uh, and the whole, it was a campaign to get calories on the menu, but they didn't have to do it. It wasn't, they didn't have to do it because of legislation. Um, and so we were kind of really, we were kind of exploring the idea, what we really want is a campaign because it's not about them having to log on for an hour, get a certificate at the end, get assessment, and away they go. We have to really engage them with this process, with the challenges that they're going to face in terms of putting calories on the menu. Um, and the idea that it's not, it doesn't happen in an hour. You know, it happens over maybe a four-week period, a six-week period. You know, as part of that, we have our like, explainer animation, which really puts them in, first of all, to say, like, this is happening, it's, you know, this is, this is coming online. Um, and as part of that, you know, that you would have action points so that the, you know, and challenges, which is something we're still exploring, and pledges, so that they would, at the end, make their own pledge. So it's not about going about 100% in the test or whatever. It's more like, okay, me as a professional, me as a learner, I, I can I pledge that this is what, these are my, you know, my capabilities, this is what I can I do. Or I kind of like a pledge, this is what I'm going to do next. This is, I'm going to create this, do this task, share it with my kind of manager, share it with a peer, you know, it could be something very simple. We're working on a program, a healthcare program around ethnicity um, and building, a, you know, it might be something very simple. Maybe talk to a colleague and say, how do they celebrate weddings in their culture? Do you know, it doesn't have to be tricky, but it's getting it out of the box, we're back to, to Gavin's box. It's getting learning out of that contained box into a kind of a time, a time frame, something that's extended. It doesn't happen in a day, like a class, classroom-based learning, or it doesn't happen in an hour. Because quite often we have clients and say, oh, can we do, turn a, a one-day course into a one-hour course? Um, and, you know, we get that a lot. And I suppose the big driver is around efficiency and, you know, around, you know, money and whatever else. But it's really thinking through, what's the most efficient way to bring about this change? You know, is it, is it a one-hour course? Or is it a lot of nuggets and, you know, different interventions that happen over, you know, maybe over an induction phase of the first 12 weeks in an organisation? So anyway, there's lots of different solutions there. Um, so I'm just going to show you 
So yeah, so this is the whole idea of a conventional e-learning, which is basically almost in some ways mirroring the classroom experience, where it's sort of contained within a, a day or within a one hour, you would not a day of e-learning, but you know, a one hour session. Um, so it's a very much a contained experience. And um, you do your assessment at the end, you don't have to really do that much beyond that. So that maybe pass the multiple choice at the end. So really moving away from that to kind of a learning pathway. So, so along the way, you know, you might look at a video or an animation, you might go into your workplace and be an evangelist. Maybe the task is you have to go and set up a peer learning group or something, you know, and talk to some people at work about, to, about the change that's coming down the line. Um, you know, maybe you look at some videos or take some videos, but it's the idea that you map out a pathway, almost like the marketing, marketing guys who do in terms of campaign, where they say, right, you know, in a year's time, we want people to have an awareness of this, we want their behaviour to be changing. So it's almost it's getting into that kind of campaign, kind of manifesto, kind of way of view learning, I suppose. Um, okay, so, um, so gamification. So gamification, I think, is another lovely term for us. I, I don't like that word, gamification, but um, that's a media term. <laughs> but anyway, um, so the whole idea of gamification, it's, we, we saw some of it earlier, uh, we saw some of it earlier. A lot of it can be very simple. It's really thinking, how do we engage the learner through this kind of through this learning experience? So maybe it's kind of visualizing the progress. So having little buns appear as they work through a part of the learning, or little kind of shopping baskets that we did for kind of an e uh, client another client who's looking at e procurement. And um, so that's a simple way. That's a game. That's a game kind of tool. It's, you know, we're all really used to it. You know, it might be something simple that there's a bonus at the end or some kind of reward. You know, so you say, okay, for a, once you kind of complete this course and email us back your feedback, we're going to enter, like, like Orange doing, we're going to enter you into the prize draw. That is a game, that's a game feature. It's about the bonuses and rewards for completion of activities. So there's a lot of different types of simple game, game type techniques to make it more fun and engaging because unless somebody has to do the learning, you really want to engage them. It's back to um, Sharon's slide of the, what was it, the please or the, you have to do. <laughs> you know, you, you, it has to be something that people will engage with and will recommend to, to other people to do. So let me just show you this. So this is our story tool. So this is a story tool that Orion has developed. And again, you can go onto the website to try it out. So it's a tool which allows you to create a digital story and share it. So it'd be really worth exploring how you can integrate storytelling, you know, into your own e-learning plans. So gamification, it's back to this very simple device. You know, you have the little buttons lighting up on screen. It's something very simple, but it just adds a little bit more fun and playfulness to it. And it's more exciting than a really dull, you know, here's where you are, you have 20 more pages to go. It's just a very simple visual, playful device. <clears throat> um, so I suppose another trend is around the whole kind of idea the idea of like learning nuggets, which really ties into the whole learning pathway. So you're not doing e-learning in a one hour session. You're going to have a number of little interventions, learning interventions along the way. Some of it which will be rich content. Some of it will be challenges, action-based, um, something to do within a kind of work environment. So, um, so one type of nugget that's become really popular, again, over the last um, year really is Infographics, another one for a glossary, <laughs> but, um, but an infographic is basically, it's data visualisation, so it's a way to make, make metrics, people relate and connect to metrics, depending on what your industry is, if there's a lot of stats, something maybe, I don't know, in accountants or something, there's probably are a lot of stats and figures, and people can very quickly switch off, you know, you see zeros, and you just switch off, you know, it's like an island, the whole banking thing, you're like, what's a billion, what's a trillion? You know, it's very easy to switch off with metrics and figures and stats. So data visualization is something where you can really, it's like a nugget of, of but there's an awful lot of rich information in it. And again, it's something that could be, could be spread, it could be shared. It's something within a learning campaign or learning pathway that you might, somebody might forward on to somebody else and say, okay, you're really interested in e-learning stats or what's happening with e-learning. Here you go. So it's something you can actually add in as part of a viral dimension in terms of getting people to adopt whatever the e-learning is that you're developing. So as I said, that's a bit of a whistle-stop tour. Um, hold on, I think you're missing something. Oh, that's it, okay. Okay, I'm going to do it. Um, 
Okay, so in terms of technologies, this is just a selection. Like, and, and, and no, Maureen and Gavin have also spoke about tools and different technologies. Um, so, again, th these are really, again, trends that we were aware of within technology and just really kind of some food for thought. Um, I suppose what we're, what we're noticing in our end is that a lot of clients, they're really saying, okay, we, we want to learn a management system, but it needs to tap into other things we're doing in terms of developing our, our staff, developing our workforce, in terms of developing competencies. So there's a real trend towards going away from a learning management system to almost like a talent management system. And you know, even within the market, a lot of companies are being bought out. We're you know, kind of for HR talent management companies are buying learning management systems. So that because a lot of you know, a lot of um, a lot of owners of companies they want they want to be able to track the learning, like Maureen was saying earlier, within a learning management system. You can track learning, you know, you can kind of get reports on, on, on completion. But some you know, there is a move now towards a more kind of talent management system where that ties into kind of the, your performance development, pro, your PDP, or you know, whatever you're planning to do for that year in terms of learning objectives. So it kind of ties into the whole kind of HR and um, part of the business as well. So that's something that we're seeing more and more. <coughs> um, you know, in terms of kind of learning management systems, there are the open source models like Moodle, which is an open source software. Um, you still might need to engage kind of coders in terms of making it bespoke to what you need, but the code itself, an open source model. Um, and then there's a lot of different kind of proprietary and software as well, like Next Dimensions, which we use for PhD now. Um, okay, so let me just, learning portals. So a learning portal, very simply, is a one-stop shop. So it's, a, it's a, landing, a landing place for a learner, where you might kind of integrate kind of a learning management system, you know, document repository, calendars, you know, notifications, messages. So it's very useful for new learners, and it's very useful in an organization where, it's, where the staff are new to e-learning, that you would have a portal somewhere they can go to. It can be almost like a layer over your, maybe, internet. Um, now one of our, um, one of the projects we do in Ireland is we, um, we kind of host and manage and kind of mine HSE land, which is um, one of the largest portals, I guess. It's one of the learning management. It's one of the biggest learning management systems in Ireland, I'm sure. So we've got um, within it, like there's a number of different hubs, a number of different landing pages for different hospitals, for different groups of professionals. Um, and it's, as I said, there's over 60,000 active learners on HC land. In terms of across the kind of geographical spread across all the different kind of um, hospitals within within the country. Um, do you want to say about that? No, we've only got like five more minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, I mean, in terms of kind of if we look at that portal, that project, you know, on HSE land, um, you know, you as a learner, you, you kind of carry, you can carry out a competency assessment. So, you can go on and say, well, okay, I'm going to do an assessment because I'm not really quite sure what training I want to do. I'm not sure what I want me to do to go to that next level in my career. So, you can actually go on and complete online your assessment. Um, you can then kind of access you know, your history of courses that you've completed, you know, refresher training that's due to be done, you know, what's kind of coming up in terms of the calendar. Um, so, there's a lot, so it's, quite, it's a very complex um, kind of tool, really, in terms of individuals managing their own learning and then for kind of hospitals and management to actually look at. Because there's obviously huge issues around compliance in the healthcare, you know, to see, okay, has everyone completed the hand hygiene course? What's, can we prove due diligence here? So it's also, it's, you know, it can be very useful for, kind of, for employers as well. So just some quotes from Fergus and St. James's. So, yes, yeah, so we've got a lot of feedback, and this is what, we won our Oscar, no? We won our Oscar, I haven't seen the gold statue, but, yes, but, um, with the brand of Hollywood, this was for this project, that's what we won it for. <coughs> Um, and I suppose just in terms of other kind of trends um, and technologies, sometimes trends and technologies combine. So there is, um, there, there's, we, I don't know if you've heard of MOOCs, I'm sure you have. Um, Trinity recently, in August, they launched their first MOOC. Um, so Trinity University, it's, it's really started within universities, 
but it is a disruptive technology, and it's, it, you know, who knows in a year, two years, how it's going to impact third level um, education. Um, but a MOOC is a massive open online. Um, so see, of course, of course, <laughs> learning with learning. Um, so it's a, a massive. Exactly. Word. <laughs> That's a MOOC point. <laughs> Should be a MOOC or whatever. Yeah. Um, so, so a MOOC basically. Um, I suppose what's interesting about a MOOC is, and I kind of joined my first MOOC about a year ago, and I found out about the MOOC on Facebook. So the whole idea of MOOCs are, they are something, it's all about sharing them, spreading the word, and they incentivize, they often have prizes if you get other people to join the MOOC. So, so they were like giving away like a, a kind of iPhones and things. If you encouraged, if you got maybe another 50 of your Facebook friends to join this MOOC. So, but it's completely scalable. Like they're aiming at like tens of thousands of learners. They're free courses. You know, a lot of them started with MIT and Stanford, but they're often free courses. Usually, you don't get a certificate of um, you don't get a degree from Stanford. Usually, it's a certificate of um, completion. You know that you've completed the course. Um, but what's, what I find really fascinating is the whole area of scalability and assessment, because the way some of the courses are very, very technical and very sophisticated models of learning, but it's all based on peer assessment, and they've developed really, really sophisticated algorithms, so that somebody, somebody's going to mark my, my homework, for want of a better word, then I mark other people's projects, but they've got really clever algorithms, so if you're a really hard marker, because based on your marking, that feeds into the algorithm, so there's all sorts of ways that whole peer assessment works in quite a sophisticated way. Um, and as I said, it's really scalable, so you're not reliant on you know, tutors, tutors to, to complete that. So, so it's really interesting things happening in terms of kind of moves. Um, and I'll show you a project we're just about to launch. We're going to launch a project on uh, Tuesday, installment. Is it still standing? <laughs> so, so. Um, but um, which is called Border Lives. And I think Border Lives it brings some of these, some of the talk of these different tools together. So Border Lives, so it's responsive, it's multi-platform. So it's, it's, when we say responsive, it means it just kind of reshapes to fit a smartphone or an iPad. So it's a responsive design. Um, the whole focus of it is learning through storytelling. So it's basically people who live in the border through the troubles telling their story. And the idea is for learners to go on, become um, story listeners, and really re reflect on the stories that they're listening to, but also reflect on well, what's the triggering in me? Why don't I like that person? Or, you know, why, why is that? Do you know, so it's the whole idea of questioning how you react to stories. Um, in some ways, it's quite MOOC like. It will be a free resource to be able online. Um, it's aimed at, in America, at kind of the third level sector in America, um, as well as you know, local community organisations um, in Ireland. Um, and, and there's a lot of, it's a lot of video based, there's a lot of video based tutorials. I know we were chatting earlier about videos, you know, the pros and cons of, you know, getting a, getting a tutor and videoing a tutor. I think, it, I think every solution is bespoke to your project. So in this project, we had a fantastic subject matter expert, Colin Craig, and he's a conflict resolution um, tutor who goes all around the world. He goes into Chicago, the gangs in Chicago, to kind of sort out conflict. And, you know, so, so, and he's a really good communicator. So we were like, oh my gosh, this is a really good opportunity. Let's do some video based, you know, nuggets of um, him kind of delivering some, some learning and then we'd have kind of interactive knowledge checks. So I think earlier when we were saying, oh, could, you know, should you use video or not? It very much depends on, you know, the resources you have available, also including in terms of presenters and their availability and how strong they are as presenters. Um, this is another project we launched a few months ago um, for the Family Planning Association, and it was very much multi-platform. It, it was aimed at teachers, so it's a blended learning approach. So it's for teachers in classrooms and primary schools um, in terms of teaching issues around, um, around family planning. Um, so again, it's, it's designed to work on kind of tablets, iPads, smart boards, and the whole design of it is that the teacher will be there. So some resources aimed at the teacher, some resources are, uh, and interactions are designed for, um, for the classroom for, for children to come up and kind of really kind of engage with the learning. And again, it's quite game-like, you know, it's kind of, um, as I said, a team love working with projects. I've loved it, I've talked about it, or a couple of students, because it is so illustrative and, you know, it's a, it's a really beautiful course. 
But they're selling it. So this is actually part of their business strategy. So the Family Planning Association will be selling this to schools. So it will be a, a kind of an e-commerce sold kind of product, which is interesting as well. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, so I mean, so I suppose I, I always get really excited about new things. So I'm the worst in the world to <laughs> be talking about new trends. But like there are a lot of really interesting trends and things happening, which won't impact maybe how you design, how we design learning today or in six months' time, but it will impact, I'd say, in the next 18 months to two years. A huge thing is wearable tech, wearable technology. Um, do you know, um, Ralph Lauren, a month or so ago, they, they launched their first um, kind of intelligent polo shirt, which they call polo <laughs> Um, and it actually has sensors built into it, so you can actually it picks up your biometrics, <coughs> and so it's so it's really kind of interesting. Where it's completely it's completely hidden, but it's kind of monitoring. It's monitoring, as I said, all that kind of all those kind of important those metrics around health. Um, the Apple Watch it's launching in um, launch, but we can't buy it. Is that, is that the thing? So it's launched for 2015. You can actually buy it. Um, Google Glass, which again has launched, but we can't, we can't buy it. Um, I was looking how much it costs, and I was like, oh, no, we can't buy it in this country yet. Um, Google Glass is really interesting because it really frees up your hands for learning. So there's no more, you know, checking your iPad, walking into, you know, walking into a, a pole or whatever. Um, it, it is kind of like, it's almost like an augmented reality. So as a learner and as a, somebody in a workplace, you can actually be carrying like your, it's almost like having, you know, it's almost like, if you say if you want to learn about, Language learning, you could be getting your subtitling in real time as you're talking to somebody in French. Like it's just, it's mind blowing in terms of what it will do to, to learning and to work based learning. You know, if you think of paramedics, maybe at the scene of an accident, they could be kind of doing voice, it's voice activated to the voice at the real time, they could say, okay, we need this kind of special injection, you know, this issue. So it's, it's a really kind of exciting time in terms of all this technology. The, there are smart rooms. Um, where you can actually wear it around and it vibrates so you get an uh, email or a Facebook notification. <laughs> but you can't buy these. Um, so, there's, so, so there's, but the whole idea, I suppose, is it's no longer an activity that you do in a session. You know, your learning can be happening, not just even in the workplace, but really in your life. So a big trend is about moving learning from kind of a dedicated learning session into the workplace. But I think a bigger trend, which is this whole idea of work-life blending, <coughs> is that learning will happen, you know, in your, as you go about your, you know, out of work activities as well. So, I mean, as I said, so those are just some, really some of the kind of the tools and plans and technologies that will impact learning. Um, so here's some more here, that's the Rock the Land culture. Um, so yeah, so I mean, as I said, so in terms of kind of really the impact, these tools in the future. Um, it's, it's really hard to know. I mean, already there's a wearable, there are a lot of wearable cameras you can get which are quite reasonable to buy. It started with Microsoft, they had a thing called a Sense Camera, Sense Cam, um, but there's, there are things now called a narrative clip. So there are a lot of um, wearable cameras um, that you can actually wear. That It's not vlogging, they will actually log every minute of your life. So it's actually logging what you're doing. And this is being, it's actually being used um, in terms of Alzheimer's, where they're finding that when, when people review the photographs of their day, that it's actually a more efficient way of memory recall than using, like, say, diary or calendar. Um, augmented reality, as I said, we've already spoken about. It's almost having that other, le you know, it's a wearable device, um, but it's, but you, you've also got that other layer kind of information. Um, so yeah, so I mean, as I said, it's a really kind of exciting time to be involved in kind of learning. Um, so this is Photoshop. <laughs> um, this is actually that, that's the wearable camera. <laughs> so you can actually put it on your kind of like on a dog. You can actually put it back in the back of your head. Um, so you know, a lot, some people if you look at these websites. They have really interesting the perspective from a dog or from a cat. You know, I mean, obviously they're quite it's quite playful, but obviously it's up to us to come up with what the learning. How you how you have to be apply these new tools to learning. So, just finally. So just finally, I mean, so avoid the trap of building your learning solution around the technology. 
the technology is a tool, it's an enabler. You really need to focus on, you know, the objectives, what you want to, the objectives you want to meet, the changes in behaviour you want to kind of bring about. So that's where you start. You know, the, t the tools are there. It's, um, you know, was Sharon saying build it and it, they will come or whatever? You know, the tools are there. We can, we, we can help with that. It's really you focusing on what, what the right learning is for, for, your, for your team, first of all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.